Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and in this video I'm going to present picture tests in practical anatomy of the abdomen, the posterior abdominal wall, part 2. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Identify the structure A, what organ it supplies, and identify the structure B, where do the accompanying veins drain. Structure A is the inferior phrenic artery. These are two small vessels. They arise immediately inferior to the aortic hiatus and the diaphragm. You can see the hiatus here. This is the abdominal aorta. As the name indicates, phrenic, it supplies the diaphragm. But apart from the branches to the diaphragm, the inferior phrenic arteries also supply uh, arteries to the suprarenal gland. These arteries are called superior suprarenal arteries because the suprarenal gland has three sources of blood supply from the inferior phrenic, superior suprarenal, middle suprarenal directly from the aorta, and inferior suprarenal comes from the renal artery. Regarding structure B, this is one of the four pairs, the first one is not shown here, it's higher up, of lumbar arteries. And in addition to supplying the anterior abdominal wall, these lumbar arteries, they provide branches that supply the spinal cord. So they are like segmental arteries. They are in the same sequence of the intercostal and subcostal arteries, and they supply the body wall. But as I said that, uh, they also send some branches, radicular branches, that provide additional supply for the spinal cord. Now, these arteries are branches of the abdominal aorta, and the accompanying veins, the lumbar veins, they are tributaries of the inferior vena cava. However, the first and second lumbar veins may empty into the ascending lumbar vein on either side. These ascending lumbar veins, they connect with the azygous and hemiazygous veins of the thorax. So if the inferior vena cava becomes blocked, then the ascending lumbar veins become important collateral channels between the lower and upper parts of the body. Identify the tendon, which structure is crossing anterior to it at this location, and then identify the muscle and list two bones to which it is attached. On the side of the spine is the psoas major muscle, and anterior to the psoas major muscle, there's a long tendon of another muscle. You can see the belly of the muscle here. It's a small belly, short and small belly. The muscle is slender, and this muscle is a variable muscle. It's not present in all people. It's uh, present in two out of three individuals. It's called the psoas minor muscle. Its tendon inserts into the iliopubic eminence. The muscle, being slender, having a short belly and a long tendon, is morphologically similar to two other muscles on the body. One of them is located in the forearm, and it's called palmaris longus, and the other is located in the leg, and it is the plantaris muscle. All have short belly and long tendon, and all start with the letter P. The structure that is crossing the tendon of the muscle at this location is the ureter. This is the abdominal part of the ureter, and as you can see here, it descends retroperitoneally on the medial aspect of the psoas major muscle, comes from the kidney. You can see the inferior pole of the kidney here, of the right kidney, and then the ureter descends downwards and becomes on the medial side of the muscle. Also, as it descends down, it crosses the genitofemoral nerve on the anterior surface of the muscle, and then passes into the pelvis by uh, crossing the external iliac artery at its bifurcation. The muscle B is, again, located in the posterior abdominal wall. It is above the iliac crest, and it is edge to edge with the psoas major on the medial side and transversus abdominis on the lateral side. The muscle is quadriangular in shape and is located in the lumbar region, hence the name quadratus lumborum. The upper part of the muscle is covered by the inferior pole of the kidney. Inferiorly, it is obvious that the muscle is attached to the iliac crest, 
medially, it is attached to the transverse processes of lumbar vertebrae, while superiorly, which is not shown here, is that it's attached to the 12th rib. Identify the structure. What is the name of the excretory passage that is located proximal to it? And then name the junction and what is its clinical significance. Structure A is located in the renal sinus, which is a narrow vertical space, a pocket within the kidney that is entered through the renal hilum where structures pass in and out of the kidney. It is a major calyx. And it is formed, as you can see here, for example, by the union of two minor calyces, proximally. And then two or three major calyces, they unite distally to form the renal pelvis. This is the funnel-shaped excretory passage that tapers down into a, the narrow ureter. And so the junction between it and the ureter is called the ureteropelvic junction and the ureter continues downwards. This junction is a site of natural ureteric constriction. Hence, it's clinically important that this constricted area is a potential site of obstruction by ureteric or kidney stones. The other sites are the crossing of the ureter to the external iliac vessels or the pelvic brim, and when the ureter traverses the bladder wall, what we call the intramural segment, a short segment that pierces the wall of the bladder obliquely. This is important in preventing reflux of urine when intravesical pressure rises. Identify the structure indicated by the metal probe and which peritoneal layer is supplied by it. Which other nerve has the same root value as nerve A? Now, to be oriented, this is a view of the lower left side of the posterior abdominal wall. And you can see here, for example, the iliac crest. And then close to the midline is the abdominal aorta. That is the inferior mesenteric artery. So we are at the level of the inferior mesenteric artery, about the level of L3, lumbar vertebra. Lateral to that is the psoas major muscle. So the nerve indicated by the metal probe is therefore medial to the psoas major muscle, and it is a branch of the lumbar plexus. The plexus is a network formed by anterior rami of nerves L1 to L4, and it divides and reunites within the substance of psoas major, thus the branches of the plexus are related to psoas. Some of the branches are anterior to the psoas, like this one, the genitofemoral nerve, the only branch anterior to the psoas. Some are lateral to psoas, not shown here, and some are medial to psoas, like the obturator nerve. This one is the obturator nerve, medial to psoas major muscle. Its root value is L2, 3, and 4. Remember that the plexus is from L1 to L4, and uh, in fact, the nerve is derived from anterior divisions of anterior primary rami of L2, 3, and 4. The same nerves, L2, 3, and 4, their posterior divisions of the anterior primary rami, they give rise to the femoral nerve. Femoral nerve is lateral to psoas and supplies the anterior compartment of the thigh, and so it shares the same root value with the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve is motor and sensory to the medial thigh, uh, what we call the adductor compartment of the thigh, and in addition to that, within the pelvis, it supplies the parietal pelvic peritoneum. In fact, uh, the parietal peritoneum, whether in the pelvis or in the abdomen, like other parietal layers of serous membranes, is supplied by somatic nerves. For example, uh, related to the peritoneum, we have the diaphragmatic peritoneum is supplied by the phrenic nerve. The parietal peritoneum of the anterolateral abdominal wall is supplied by the lower intercostal and first lumbar nerves which also supply the overlying muscles with sensory and skin with sensory fibers. So the obturator nerve at this location, it supplies the part of the parietal pelvic peritoneum. Identify the structure at which vertebral level it commences and identify the muscle with which muscle it fuses distally. This is the posterior abdominal wall and the pelvis. To the left of the midline is the aorta, and just to the right of the midline is the 
inferior vena cava. There is some dryness and shrinkage because this is a plastinated specimen. If you follow the inferior vena cava downwards, you can see that it is formed by the union of two common iliac veins. It's the same way that the aorta divides into two common iliac arteries. But you can see that the union of the two common iliac veins to form the inferior vena cava is a little bit distal to the bifurcation of the aorta. The level of formation of the inferior vena cava is at the level of L5 vertebra, and the level of bifurcation of the aorta is at the level of L4 vertebra. Regarding the muscle B, note that it is located below the iliac crest. Above the iliac crest, you have quadratus lumborum and transversus abdominis. Below the iliac crest is the iliac fossa, and it is uh, occupied by the iliacus muscle, lateral to the psoas major muscle. You can see that in the groove between them is the femoral nerve. Inferiorly, iliacus muscle joins with the psoas major muscle, because they are so close to each other here, and their tendon attaches to the lesser trochanter of the femur. And as a combined muscle, they are referred to as the iliopsoas muscle. They pass beneath the inguinal ligament and their tendon they will be found in the femoral triangle in the front of the thigh. Both of them, they flex the thigh at the hip joint. They are strong flexors. That's why inflammation of iliopsoas tendon can result from activities that involve repeated flexion of the hip joint, such as athletics and dancing. The muscle is supplied by the femoral nerve, which can be seen in the groove between it and the psoas major muscle. Identify the structure, what is its root value, and then uh, identify the structure B, name its two terminal branches. Nerve A is located in the posterior abdominal wall, arising from the lateral side of the psoas major muscle above the iliac crest. You can see that it is also related to the inferior pole of the kidney, behind the inferior pole of the kidney. This is the ilioinguinal nerve. This nerve passes in parallel with a nerve located a little bit higher than it, and it's called the iliohypogastric nerve. Keep in mind that the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal, they have the same root value. Both of them are L1, anterior primary ramus, either before or soon after emerging from the lateral border of the psoas major muscle, they split from each other. So sometimes you can see them separate, sometimes you can see a single trunk, and then the ilioinguinal splits down from it. And both of these nerves, they pass around the anterior lateral abdominal wall. In fact, both of them, they pierce the transversus abdominis muscle, so they will find themselves sandwiched between transversus abdominis and internal oblique layer, which is the neurovascular plane in the abdomen. The ilioinguinal nerve, which is this one, it enters the inguinal canal and leaves it through the superficial inguinal ring, but does not traverse it from the deep to the superficial. Once it leaves the superficial inguinal ring, it supplies the skin of the scrotum and the upper medial part of the thigh. Now just keep this area of supply in mind because we are going to need it when we answer section C, name the reflex that is mediated by these two nerves. Regarding nerve B, this is another branch of the lumbar plexus. It is the nerve that arises anterior to psoas major muscle. It is the genitofemoral nerve and is derived from L1 and L2. So it has the same root value, L1 at least, of that of the ilioinguinal nerve. And you can see here that this nerve, as it passes anterior to psoas, it is crossed by the ureter, and both are crossed by the gonadal vessels. Look at this. This is the artery coming from the abdominal aorta, either testicular or ovarian artery. And this is the vein, gonadal vein. It is on the right side, so it drains into the inferior vena cava. Regarding the two terminal branches, the names of the branches are indicated by the name of the original nerve, genitofemoral. So it divides into a genital branch, and this genital branch continues downwards and enters the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring, which is present somewhere here, the genital branch, accompanied by some other structures like the vas and the uh, testicular vessels. And then we have the femoral branch, and the femoral branch continues downwards, deep to the inguinal ligament, and appears in the anterior part of the thigh to supply the skin in front of the thigh. That makes a roof for the femoral triangle.
However, the genital femoral nerve is not only sensory, it is also motor. It's genital branch that passes through the deep inguinal ring and traverses the inguinal canal, supplies the cremasteric muscle, and also provides sensory fibers for the scrotal skin. Now, the cremasteric reflex is described as contraction of the cremaster muscle elicited by lightly stroking the medial aspect of the upper thigh. This is the area that is supplied by the ilioinguinal nerve, L1. Usually stroking it with an applicator stick, this contraction of the cremaster muscle results in elevation of the testis of the same side. Remember that the muscle is supplied by motor fibers from the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve, which also has a root value of L1 plus 2. The reflex is very active in children.